In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome to Comet Chasing, where we track down the most unpredictable objects in the sky. Greg, this month we've got a wild lineup. One comet that erupts unpredictably, another that's completely vanished, and one breaking records way out past Saturn. Yeah, Bernard, 29P is at it again. It's been flaring up for decades, sometimes by five, even nine magnitudes. One night it's faint, and the next it's suddenly much brighter. Then there's Comet C 2024 G3 Atlas, which didn't just fade, it disintegrated. Well, mostly. There's a claim that it still has a coma, but so far the images don't back that up. And then we've got Comet 2025 D1, already active while it's still farther out than Saturn. That's not something we see often. Right. Most comets don't start outgassing that far from the sun. Whatever is fueling it, it's not water ice. So we've got explosions, disappearances, and record-breaking activity. We'll break it all down and, if possible, show you how to observe them, assuming they cooperate. Or in 29P's case, don't erupt the second you step away from the telescope. Let's get started. Imagine a comet that doesn't play by the rules, a frozen giant lurking in the outer solar system, exploding without warning in massive outbursts that can make it hundreds of times brighter overnight. That's Comet 29P Schwassmann Wachmann 1, or just 29P, to those who've been chasing its wild behavior for decades. First discovered in 1927 by German astronomers Schwassmann and Wachmann, 29P has been keeping astronomers on their toes for nearly a century. It was first spotted during an outburst, flaring to magnitude 13 before quickly fading. But this wasn't a one-time event. This comet has been erupting ever since. Unlike most comets that dive toward the Sun, 29P follows an almost circular path between Jupiter and Saturn, locked in a deep freeze at around six astronomical units. It should be quiet, but it refuses to behave. Instead of steadily shedding gas and dust, 29P erupts, violently and unpredictably. It can brighten by five to nine magnitudes, sometimes in just hours. Astronomers call this cryovolcanism where volatile gases like carbon monoxide build up beneath the surface until the pressure is too much and an explosion blasts material into space. Think of it like a champagne bottle under pressure, except this one is 60 kilometers across and pops its cork multiple times a year. On average, 29P has at least seven outbursts annually, but sometimes they come in rapid succession. In September 2021, a series of eruptions made it nearly 100 times brighter in just a few days, and we still don't fully understand why. Some theories suggest its surface is sealed by an insulating crust, trapping gas until pressure forces it to break through. Others think slow rotation exposes fresh volatile ice. Whatever the cause, this is one of the most dynamic objects in the solar system, and it's right within reach of amateur telescopes. 29P isn't just for the professionals. This is a comet you can track from your own backyard. With a 12.5 inch or larger telescope, you can witness its unpredictable nature firsthand. One night, it's a faint smudge at magnitude 13. The next, it could be brightening into a ghostly, expanding coma. If you're into imaging, this is one of the most scientifically valuable targets you can monitor. Every observation adds to the bigger picture, helping astronomers understand this chaotic, icy time bomb orbiting beyond Jupiter. Stick around and we'll show you exactly how to find and observe Comet 29P this month. Who knows? You might just catch it in the middle of an outburst. So let's look at how to best go about observing 29P. On a moonless night from a dark site, when it's high in the sky, it will be perceptible in a 12-inch telescope. Perceptible means it's not easy, but not difficult either. It's in between. You'll need to have a good chart to know exactly where to look. Look for a star that looks funny, maybe a little bigger than it should be, or a little fuzzy. Then use averted vision to try to spot as much of the surrounding coma as you can. You may be surprised how large it is. It can be spotted in a 10 inch, but it'll be more difficult. But if you're very careful, 
to know exactly where to look, it shouldn't be that hard. Look for a faint star that shouldn't be there, and then for it to be fuzzy. An expert observer may be able to spot it in even smaller instruments. The most important thing is to have a detailed chart that accurately plots the position of the comet at the time you are looking. Use your lowest power eyepiece. Match the stars in the eyepiece to the chart and find the position in the sky where it should be at. It also helps a lot if the chart shows stars to your magnitude limit and no fainter. My SkyTool software makes all this pretty easy. Remember, these predictions are assuming it's at typical brightness. It may be much easier if it's having an outburst. So even if you have a smaller telescope, it might still be worth a shot. You never know for sure until you look. There's a website from the British Astronomical Association that's a great resource for following 29P. So here's their graph of the brightness of the comet with the effects of changing distance to the Earth and the Sun removed. It goes from September to the present. You can see that it's been pretty active with the last major outburst coming on February 2nd. It's currently at a low and the next outburst could come at any time. So think about getting out there one night soon. Most comets brighten, fade, and move on. But after putting on a spectacular show in early January, C2024, G3 Atlas did something stranger. It disintegrated, leaving behind only its tail, drifting in space like an echo of what once was. Here's the fascinating part. The tail didn't just scatter and drift away. Instead, it lingered in place, slowly fading, rather than dispersing away from the sun, as some might expect. A headless comet, a true ghost in the sky. There's a tiny chance some deep exposures from the southern hemisphere this spring might still pick up traces of the coma. But for now, the nucleus is gone. But not everyone agrees. A report claims an 8.5 magnitude coma was visible in late February, yet every image we could find shows nothing. The issue? All those visual reports come from a single observer. It's a reminder that even today, some comet observations reflect expectations rather than reality, a phenomenon old school observers call observing the ephemeris. Out of curiosity, I checked several AI tools for information. Grok 3 confidently concluded the comet had only partially disintegrated, but it based this on the same unverified observations. Meanwhile, GPT-40 actually weighed the evidence and reached the right conclusion. The coma is gone. It's a good example of why careful vetting still matters, even in an age of AI. Even well-known astronomy sites can be unreliable. The Sky Live, for example, still lists 2024 G3 as if it's intact. It's tricky to make visibility predictions for a comet that no longer exists. The lack of expert review means you can't always take automated data at face value. The site also claims it is visible in binoculars. Even if this prediction was based on an accurate magnitude, you can't reliably estimate the visibility of a comet based on the magnitude alone. So predictions like this should be taken with a big grain of salt. This is why Greg created an algorithm to make better predictions. Comets were not being observed by some amateurs because the poor predictions often led to disappointment. So what can we say about the prospects of observing it? This is a tough one. We know it can't be seen from the Northern Hemisphere. Traditional reports of the brightness of a comet are for the coma, which has disappeared. The brightness value of 8.5 that you see repeated is not reliable. It is difficult to find general reports of people seeing it visually. Greg's feeling is that the tail has likely faded beyond the limits of visual observation based on recent images. But if it were to be glimpsed, a very wide field telescope or binoculars from a dark site would be your best bet. So what's left? A fading dust remnant, a lesson in comet evolution, and a reminder that not all observations are created equal. C2025-D1, Grohler, is something special. While it won't become a bright comet visible in amateur telescopes, it's making history. This is a dynamically new Oort cloud comet with an extremely high perihelion. 
14.1 astronomical units, farther than Saturn. That alone makes it rare, but what's truly remarkable is its early activity. This comet was active at least as far out as 21 astronomical units, placing it in an elite group of distant comets alongside C2010U3, C2014UN271, and C2017K2. We now have pre-discovery images going back to 2018, including data from the Subaru and CFHT telescopes, showing a broad tail even at extreme distances. This suggests the comet has been active for years, driven by something other than the usual water ice sublimation. Instead, its outgassing is likely fueled by the vaporization of supervolatile ices like carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, ices that remain solid at much lower temperatures than water. Then there's the question of its intrinsic brightness. The absolute magnitude h provided by the minor planet center is 1.2, while an evaluation of recent observations by Seichi Yoshida suggests a more reasonable value of 2.2. Either way, this is an exceptionally bright comet, and that likely means it is also very large. However, h values measure reflected light from the coma, not the nucleus itself, and a bright coma can result from the reflected light perhaps from heavy dust production, rather than the size of the nucleus. Even so, this suggests 2025 D1 is among the largest comets discovered at this distance. Still, this is an important object for understanding the earliest stages of comet activation and how dynamically new Oort cloud comets behave as they enter the inner solar system for the first time. As more data comes in, it could help refine our understanding of comet formation outgassing processes, and the role of supervolatiles in long-period comets. 2025 D1 may not be a spectacular sight, but it's a fascinating find nonetheless. Comets don't follow the same rules as planets or stars. They quickly evolve, break apart, and sometimes erupt without warning. 29P keeps us guessing with its outbursts. 2024 G3 reminds us that some comets don't survive the journey, and 2025 D1 is giving us a rare look at fresh activity in the frozen reaches beyond Saturn. What else is out there waiting to be discovered? And how many more comets will surprise us before the year is over? Keep watching the skies. We'll be here to guide you in tracking them down.